Shalom. Shalom to the Lord's elect. Let's begin this lesson by first and foremost giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, and His only begotten Son, our King, our Redeemer, our Savior, Yahweh Shai. Let's give double honors to our head apostles followed by the bishop, the elders out of the great millstone that taught us this truth, and salutations to the Lord's elect, starting with the tabernacle of David, the 144,000, followed by the large multitude, men, women, children, whom our King, our Redeemer, Yahusha, is going to have mercy upon. Again, it's your brother Malak uh, coming to you with another uh, you know, news and prophecy. It's going to be quick, but we know that today is the day of atonement. And as we ask the Lord uh, to blot out our sins, you know, you know, our previous sins and our current sins, and continue to renew in us in a clean spirit, like David said, actually, no, I don't as well get it. Let's go to the book of Psalm 51. I think I had it. I have it up. Psalm 51, verse 7, starting from verse 9. Psalm 51, verse 9. And we know. We know how why David wrote the Psalms because you go from the top, it tells you David when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba, who was Uriah's uh, wife, have mercy upon me, O power, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. We know transgression is what that's why sins, right? Since it's the transgression of the law, and the law, according to our heritage, and according to our history, you know, whether you're not supposed to uh, take somebody else's wife, you know, you're never supposed to commit adultery. You know, we have a law that was supposed to uh, keep us from all this nation, make us holy. You see, according to the book of Deuteronomy 4, 7, I believe, you see, the Lord gave us the statutes and commandment to set us apart from these nations. All right. So David knew what he did. But here, you know, this is what David wrote. This is what David says in the book of Psalm 51, 9. He says here, actually, no, I don't. Let's, we must well read it all, family. It is a beautiful, uh, what is it called? A beautiful psalm. Let's go from the top. It says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. I just read it twice. You know, the Lord wanted me to read it again. He said, Behold, thou desirest truth. Hear that? Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. It says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Because when the Lord bring the wrath upon you, you know that you will be in church. You know, and our beloved King David knew that going into Bathsheba, and eh, having sex with Bathsheba, getting her pregnant, and then killing Bathsheba's husband was a terrible thing to do. You see, but here he said, Psalm 51, I said, hide thy face from my sins. This is what we are doing right now, the day of atonement. We are asking the Lord, whatever we've done, our previous sins, our current sins, that he will blot it all out. You see, he knows and our power, he is, family, he is full of tender mercies. And when it comes to the hopeful elect, oh yes, we pray. We pray that family indeed, that's exactly what he's going to do for us, blot out our sins. It says, hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O power, and renew a right spirit within me. You see, 
That's what we want, a right spirit. So as he purges us, eh, he purges us, you know, take all these wicked thoughts, eh, you see, from us. We pray that he will fill us with the spirit that pleases him. Eh? I just want to bring that out quickly. You see, it's a day of atonement. And again, we're supposed to afflict our body. No food, no water. Eh? From sundown yesterday to sundown today. All right. So let's get right into it. Um, let's go here. Let's go here. Uh, we're going to bring this the article out. We uh, we spoke a bit on it yesterday during our our street uh, byways and highways teaching. Yeah, uh, midweek service. We touch a bit on this thing here. Our friend here, and this is coming from Pro News. A lot of people have picked this news out. This is coming from uh, Bill Gates. If we avoid a big war, then there will be another pandemic. This is what he's saying. Because this is what they want. And this is... Uh, the Lord is allowing them to fulfill their, 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 their part in this movie. That's right. They know. They are controlling. On the left hand side, the Lord controls them. The Lord is allowing them to destroy, not just the, the, to destroy society and also to destroy themselves. This is what they are about to do. We know that the Lord said he's going to send the plagues. Third world war is coming. He says, if we, he says, if we avoid a big war, again, we are not avoiding any big war. We are not avoiding any big war. Third world war is coming. And we're going to prove, we continue to prove it through the, script, the scriptures and then what? And then through what the events that are taking place in the world. From the defender of the vaccine, it says om ominous predictions from the defender of vaccines and confinement in the years of the pandemic. Listen to this. Bill Gates made some very alarming statements saying that if we avoid a major war, then yes, there will be another pandemic probably within the next 25 years. The predictions of a man closely connected with the system of Klaus Schwab and a believer in the doctrine of the Great Reset cause concern because this system, in order to impose its fanatic philosophy, would be comfortable with a major disaster such as global nuclear war, very likely at this stage, or a truly deadly pandemic. That's right. Because the law says the event that are about to happen on this planet eh, has never ever happened before. And they know. Because in their mind, they honestly believe that they are the one that's going to bring their new world order through the pandemic and nuclear war. But it is the Lord that is allowing them to do it. The Lord is bringing an end into this kingdom. The Lord is coming to end this kingdom. Let's go to the book of Psalm 52. It says here, the tongue deviseth mischief. That's all they do. Like a sharp razor working deceitfully. It said, thou lovest evil more than good. That's what these people are about. Self-proclaimed white man family. He family, he relinqu he love it. Eh? It says here, thou lovest evil more than good. And lying rather than to speak righteousness. And it says here, thou, uh, it says here, <clears throat> sorry, it says, thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. The Most High shall likewise destroy thee forever. That's why it tells you, the Lord says they shall pass away like their own dung. That's why when you sit on the toilet, you see the stuff that come out of you. That's why when you flush it, that's it. That's how the Lord compared the self-proclaimed white man. Obadiah 118 also tells you. It says here, the most high, Psalm 52, 5, the most high shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Oh, we're going to witness it. We're going to see it because family, remember the Bible said the joy of the hypocrite is only for a moment. It said, Lo, this is the man that made not the most high his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches. Because he tells you, he says during the 2020 to 2024, they increased their wealth because of the pandemic. 
You see, but listen to what the Lord is saying, though, because this is what matters. Whatever the Lord says, that's what is going to happen. Listen to what the Lord is saying about them. Because at the top, it says what? Futility of boastful wickedness. Right? It's talking about what? The wicked. It says here, Lo, this is the man that made not the most high his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches. He's considered one of the richest men, no? He's considered one of the richest men. Eh? And strengthen himself in his wickedness. That's what they do. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of the power. That's the righteous, the hopeful elect. I trust in the mercy of our power forever and ever. No matter what comes our way, we're going to put our trust in the Lord. You see? But here, I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on thy name for it is good before thy saints. I know this goes into other things, but I just wanted to read that. Yeah, they are warning you. They are telling you. If we avoid the major war, the pandemic will be next. Because at the end of the day, the major war is going to lead to uh, their new world order. The nuclear war, that's right. Because the nuclear war, they are hoping that it will destroy a lot of people. Because remember, this whole thing is what uh, depopulation and uh, depopulation. That's why they are introducing more, you know what, the uh, pandemics and all, all, type, all type of stuff, all type of diseases. That's why, that's what they are doing. But we say, Tawada Yahawa, Bahashem Yahawa Shai, Bahashem Because it's the Lord that is bringing the plagues upon this earth and he's using them to do it, to end this kingdom. And as we speak, that's why they're waiting for the major war. They are poking the bear, poking the bear, but they don't know that it's the Lord that is allowing it. The Lord is allowing all the global south to come together. That's right. And he's using Russia to be the head of that, that side. And then using America to be the what? America. To be the head of what? The West. You see, this war is going to be between the East and the West. And we know that the West is going to lose miserably. And Yahweh Shai is going to show up. And then they're all going to put their differences aside. And fight the second coming of our Lord. Our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. And we know how that is going to play out according to the book of Revelation 12, 7 down and then also 2 Ezra chapter 13. The Lord said there was after Yahweh Shai was done with them, nothing was to be perceived but just smoke and dust. That is why it says here, let me go here quickly. Let me go here. I think I think it's Isaiah 40. No, I think it's Psalm 46. Let's go there quickly. This is going to be quick, family. This is going to be quick. You know, Psalm 46. It says here, let me see if I can. Yeah, it says here. Let me pick it up from verse 5. Psalm 46, 5. It says, the power is in the midst of her. In the midst of who? That's why Jerusalem. In the midst of us. You hear that? She shall not be moved. The Most High shall help her. Who's the Lord's going to help? The elect. Listen to this. And and that right early. Let me read the entire thing. Psalm 46 verse 5. Yahweh is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. The elect. The Most High shall help her. And that right early. You hear? But verse 6 it says here. The heathen raged. Listen to this. The heathen they raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. That is what is coming. They are talking about their new world order. They don't know that this World War Three is the end of their kingdom. But we are here to tell them that they are not going to rise up like the Phoenix and put everything together again. This is the end of a wicked kingdom. And we can't wait for the Lord to establish us. That's why the Lord says, They that make mention of the Lord shall not hold their peace until He make Jerusalem a praise upon this earth. So we are never going to stop until your, your Jerusalem eh, become a praise upon the earth. Until the children of Israel are on top of the food chain, ruling over all this nation. We are not stopping. Russia and China announced a military partnership against the U.S. Do you want me to repeat that? Russia and China 
announce a military partnership against the U.S. That's right. This is what the Lord is doing. U.S. UK liberate Ukraine's use of what? That's right. Long range weapons against Russia. Because uh, Anthony Blinken, who is the Secretary of State of United uh, States, went to what? Uh, went to uh, uh, Kiev, Ukraine yesterday with Lamy also the foreign minister of uk to make the announcement to tell ukraine that they can now strike deep inside russia you hear that russia and china announced today for the first time officially that they are forming a military partnership to face the american threat and in particularly if the u.s installs nuclear missiles in japan or if they threaten the security of one or the other it is the first time that the two superpowers, one Russia nuclear and other China, at the level of conventional power, announce a military partnership against the U.S. Family, we can make this up. And we say, Tawada, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. The Lord indeed is going to be feared. That's right. That's what the Lord is doing. You see, we say, Tawada, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Now listen to this. Mm -hmm. listen to this listen to this family pentagon eh order study of potential nuclear strike in eastern europe who do you who is in eastern europe that's russia yeah pentagon orders listen to this these are not my words from rt a pentagon orders study of potential nuclear strike in eastern europe the program will model a scenario in which the region faces an atomic disaster document show the u.s defense department has ordered a study which will simulate the impact of a nuclear conflict on global agriculture you see the law says if it doesn't cut the time short there shall no flesh be saved that's right the, the lord says you see what they're about to they say nuclear the lord says if he doesn't cut the time short there shall no flesh be saved. Let's go there quickly before I go to Psalm 58. Let's go here. The Lord says, unless that day should be shortened. Let's go to Matthew 24 verse 21. Hear what Yahweh Shai says. Matthew 24 verse 21. Our king. It says, for then shall be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No nor ever shall be and except verse 22 matthew 24 22 and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened when you read these things here family esau is not just going to destroy everybody he's also going to destroy himself the things that are supposed to sustain life. You're talking about agriculture. Yeah, Esau wants, he says, the U.S. Defense Department has ordered a study which will simulate the impact of a nuclear conflict on global agriculture. Yeah. If you don't know who the wicked is, if you do, you can see that the self-proclaimed white man is wicked and need to be wiped off the face of the earth, then there's something is wrong with you. Who comes up with these ideas? That's right. Who comes up with these ideas? Nobody but Esau, he himself proclaimed white man. When the Bible says, the Lord says what? He gave him what? To take peace from the earth. You think he was joking? Revelation uh, 6 verse 4. It says here, And there went out another horse that was red. That's the self-proclaimed white man. Esau, that's right. Red as a hairy garment. That's right. He, they are the red people. Eh? And what? Horse represents what? Power. Who is in the, in, in, in the power seat? Whose face is on the money? That's why Esau Edom. That's why whose, whose money is the world reserve currency? That's why the American dollar. Yes, family. They are the one in rulership. It says here, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. You think dropping nuclear missiles all over the world, family, nuclear war, you think that's going to bring peace? No, it's never going to bring, it's going to destroy everybody. That's why the Lord says what? If he doesn't cut the time short, there shall no flesh be saved. 
But for the elect's sake, he's going to cut the time short. Because Esau, he himself proclaimed white man, is about to lose his mind. Eh? Again, it says here, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him. That sat there on to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. These are all part of his sword, his nuclear missiles, his drones, his, uh, his uh, bioweapons. That's right. They're about to kill each other. That's what is coming. Because the prophecy has to be fulfilled. It's not what I say. It's what the Lord says. And they are fulfilling that role. That's what he saw. That if anybody's out there telling you that peace is coming. No, peace is not coming. Yahweh Shai, he's the one bringing peace after he destroyed this place. So from here, it is disaster upon disaster. And let's go to Psalm 58. Let's read a bit here. Psalm 58. And... It says, prayer for the punishment of the wicked. Who is the wicked? Self-proclaimed white man. Border of wickedness. Malachi 1, 4. It says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. That is why they are about to up. They are orders steady. Pentagon orders steady of potential nuclear strike in Eastern Europe. Yeah, let's steady. Let's study. Yeah, let, 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 let's drop the bomb and then we're going to send our researchers just to find out the impact it's going to have on the environment. Yeah. That is self-proclaimed white man. That's right. The Lord is coming to remove him. It says here, it says here, uh, Psalm 58 to ye in heart. Eh? Ye in heart, ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Let's read this in the, uh, in the NLT. It says here, No, you plot injustice in your heart, meaning your mind. You spread violence throughout the land. Who does that? The self-proclaimed white man. Yeah. Yeah. He said the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. All part of it. They can't tell the truth. The moment they come out of their mother's womb, this is what the Lord, that's this is what the Lord put upon them. It said, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear. Eh? You see, verse 6, it said, break their teeth, oh power, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, their rulership. That's what is about to happen. It said, let them melt away as waters which run continually. When he bended his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as cut in pieces. Let's, let them be as cut in pieces. As a snail which melted, let every one of them pass away. Like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. That's, what, that's their future. Obadiah 1.18 Self-proclaimed white man, family, nobody is going to even remember. It is, they're not going to remember him. They're going to be done away with. And this is all leading to that. The third world war. And then after the thousand years of slavery, they're all going to be gathered up and burnt up. Read it. It's all in Obadiah 1. Eh? It says here, verse 10. No, no, no. It says no. Verse 9. It said, before you plot, sorry, before your pot can feel the tones, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice. The hopeful elect, man, we're praying, man. We're praying that we are part of the elect. It said, the righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. It's all coming, man. We're going to see it, man. Lord willing. It says, so shall a man, so, so that a man, Psalm 58, 11, so that a man shall say, verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is the power that judges in the earth. That's what the Lord told you that what? He says what? Oh, uh, Zephaniah uh, 3 8. He says, Wait ye upon me till I rise up to the prey. And again, he says, roughly paraphrasing, my determination is to gather all the nation and pour out my fear. I mean, what am I doing? I must well get it before I butcher it. Let's go to Zephaniah. The Lord said, Don't take any matters into your hand. The Lord is the one. He's going to rise up to the praise. Zephaniah 3, 8. It says here, Therefore wait ye upon me, says the Lord Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination 
is to gather the nations, eh? That I may assemble the kingdoms. You're gonna say, everybody's gonna dance. Oh, this third world war, they no, but there ain't gonna be anybody sitting back and saying that I just wanna watch. No, everybody's gonna get involved because it's the Lord that is assembling all the nations. It says here, for my determination is to gather the nation that I may assemble the kingdom to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. That's right. Fire is coming. That's what the Lord is bringing. And now hear what this gentleman is saying. This is a foreign, former uh, foreign, uh, what is it called? Uh, policy advisor of, of Russia. He said, enemies, listen to this. This is what he's saying. Enemies must realize Russia could go nuclear as Kremlin advisor. The existing doctrine is outdated and does not serve as a deterrent. Sergei Karaganov has said, Russian nuclear doctrine urgently needs to be revised to allow a nuclear response to any major military aggression against the country former kremlin advisor sergey karaganov stated on wednesday the former foreign policy advisor to the deputy head of the russian presidential administration told the commerce daily that the existing document is woefully outdated and no longer serves as the effective deterrent let's look up this word commerce is not translating a Russian newspaper okay Russian newspaper Okay, so you hear it. So they need to change. It says here, adopted, it says here, the foreign, let's read this again. The former foreign policy advisor to the deputy head of Russia, presidential administration, told the commencement daily that the existing document is woefully outdated and no longer serve as an effective deterrent. Eh? You see, let's, 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 you see, it says here, we have allowed the situation to deteriorate to a point when our adversaries believe we will not use nuclear weapons under any circumstances. The political scientist said, having nuclear weapons without being able to convince your enemies that you are ready to use them is suicide. A failure to have an effective nuclear deterrent policy will plunge the world into a series of wars that will inevitably turn nuclear and end up with a World War III. But we know that World War III was already said it's already said in the bible it's already in the bible and yes it's going to come to fruition again we always go here revelation uh revelation 8 verse 13 quickly okay it tells you and the third no and the, and the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain no revelation 8 13 sorry revelation 8 13 and i beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven and eh? saying with a loud voice this is what the message Yahweh shai sent it gave the angel to go and reveal to john on the island of patmos to tell john that before he comes the second before Yahweh shai his second coming that's why it's going to be through the third world war there have to be three wars before he comes and in the midst of that last one which is the third world war that's when Yahweh shai is going to make an entrance and i beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven singing with a loud voice whoa 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 that's three world wars we know that the first world war came and passed in 14 1914 to 1918 and the second world war came and passed 1939 to 1945 and now we're waiting for the last world war and which is already here it is here it says here to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound all right so we know that from what he is saying here Again, a failure to have an effective nuclear deterrent policy will plunge the world into a series of wars that will inevitably turn nuclear and end up with the World War III. So we're telling you before it happens because that's how the Lord gets his glory. He already predicted. every All credit, honor, glory, praises go to the Lord, Yahweh. 
and through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. You see, because the Lord told us what is the, the Lord again revealed his secret to what? His prophets. So we're telling you before it happens, so the Lord will get all the glory. It's a prophesying means what? Say it before. You see, we're saying it before it happens. Karaganov believes adding that this could happen within the span of several years. The main goal of a doctrine should be in a convincing, no, it should be in convincing all current and future enemies that Russia is ready to use nuclear weapons. His words came amid the continual Ukrainian incursion into Russia, Kursk region and Kiev attempt to receive permission for the use of Western long-range missiles to strike deep inside the country. Okay, so we say Tawada Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Kadash. And here, United States, UK scrambled to supply Ukraine with Amram, Amram missile because it's all what? That's why right. Ukraine is losing badly and family. Ukraine fall, NATO falls, and they can't have that. But that's how the law set it up. NATO proxy conflict in Ukraine has been draining Western country stocks, with Western enablers of the neo Nazi regime in Kiev struggling to meet its insatiable demands for defense system. Western enablers of the neo Nazi regime are struggling to meet an insatiable demand for defense system. The Pentagon has allocated $1.2 billion for the production of advanced medium range air to air missile, eh, including the Ukraine including for Ukraine by the U.S. company Raytheon. So, escalation, escalation, escalation. And we say, Tawada Yahawa Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem Nukakodash. West Ukraine line changes as funds dry out and Russia advance goes full throttle. As the Russian military continue its offensive, this is from X, also formerly known as Twitter, as, uh, as the Russian military continues its offensive, Western rhetoric has changed to calls for a realistic solution to the conflict. No, family, there ain't no peace coming. Peace is not coming to anybody. Peace is not coming to anybody. There ain't going to be no peace. Yahweh Shah, he's known as the Prince of Peace. He's the one that bringing peace. There's nowhere in the Bible that says any of these leaders were supposed to bring peace. Remember what the Bible says, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. It says Esau was to receive a great sword to take peace from the earth. It didn't say Esau was given a sword to bring peace upon the earth. If you are out there protesting, you want peace, you peace, you peace, that means you're going against the Lord's program. Okay? You are going, literally going against the Lord's program. All right? The Lord never put these people in rulership to, to bring peace because it tells you that when they came into power, as a matter of fact, let's do that quickly. When Esau came into power starting with the greek that's right the greek alexander the great let's go here let me go here because that's when what wickedness was multiplied no that says evil were multiplied let's go to the book of baruch not baruch maccabees maccabees one i think let's pick it up from verse uh 10 it says here let me see um It says, where is it? It says, that's when wickedness went. Okay, so it started off. Let's read it. And it came in, and it happened. And this is the beginning of Esau's kingdom. Because if you go back to the book of Daniel, let me see if Daniel 2, we've gone there many times to look at the image. Let me go here. Bring it quickly. I mean, there might be a new listener. Daniel 2 image. It goes to show you this how the Lord, the Lord set up all these kingdoms, right? It set up where what the gold being what the head of the gold is what the kingdom of uh, Assyrian Babylonian, the chest arm is what the kingdom of the Medes and Persia, and then after that it was what that's right, the belly was what that's right, the Greek okay, the Greek kingdom that's what that's Alexander the Great, that's the beginning of their kingdom right here, okay, the ties the beginning of their kingdom, okay, but then when you go back here, that's how when Esau that's when they says the wickedness evil were multiplied let me get that let's go back to maccabees where is it the book of maccabee and it happened after that who came out of the land of chittim has smitten darius king of the persians remember and the meat that reigned in his instead and the first over greece 
and made many wars and won many strongholds and slew the kings of the earth. Because this is the beginning of their rulership. You see, everybody had a time to rule because the Lord set them up and went through to the ends of the earth and took spoils of many nations insomuch that the earth was quiet before him. Whereupon he was exalted and his heart was lifted up and he gathered a mighty strong host and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. And after these things, he fell sick and he perceived that he should die. Wherefore, he called his servants, such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. Okay, so he divided his kingdom among his general. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died and his servants bear rule everyone in his place. So now they took over. Now this is the beginning of their rulership. Eh? And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And what? Verse 9. And evils were multiplied in the earth. And it has not stopped since they took over. It is one disaster after disaster. Because what? The earth was given into the hand of the wicked. This is the beginning of their rulership. You want to know who the wicked is? Tell you Malachi 1.4. The border of wickedness is what? Esau he himself proclaimed white men. And Esau is the end of the world. And a second Ezra chapter 6 verse 9. Esau self proclaimed white men is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of a that followeth. So beloved, you see Western officials admit many African countries resist U.S. military presence report. And even a small, it says here, Western officials in Africa have admitted that even minor U.S. military presence in Africa is unacceptable for many countries on the continent. The Wall Street Journal reported on Wednesday because you're looking at the end of a kingdom. Nobody, everybody's kicking Esau out. Esau is a vagabond. Now the Lord is bringing punishment to end his kingdom. Tawada Yahweh Ba Hashem That's what we are rejoicing. We pray that when the Lord shows up, indeed, he will have mercy upon us. We pray that we are part of the elect. That's what it's all about. Eh? We're just going to fly through this headline news from the people's voice. And eh? what are by Shem Yahushai said, Trump claims debate with Harris was rigged. It's a joke, family. It's a joke. You see, Trump has condemned ABC News for letting Kamala Harris say anything she wanted. We don't care. We don't care. They put these two people in front of you like you have a choice. Eh? No, you don't have any choice. At the end of the day, they're going to pick who they want to uh, to put as a, a puppet leader to continue to uh, to con continue to push their hedge money. Eh? Their hedge money is what? To continue to be on the in the power seat. America is finished because the Lord gave them a time to rule. The Esau, the self-proclaimed white man kingdom is coming to an end. Yes, and the Lord is going to what? Uh, Use the house that is divided. Russia, that's right. The Edomite Russians also, they all read, that's right. There are Israelites among them. Like we're not saying that every white man is a, is Edom. No, self-proclaimed white man is Edom. No, there are Israelites spread among this nation. Israelites are going to come looking pale skin, blue eyes, blonde hair. That's right. You see, they're going to come looking like the so-called Chinese. They're going to come looking like the so-called Arab. It's the spirit that bear witness with our spirit. When the Lord comes, he's the one that's going to separate everybody. You know, for now, that, that's what the Lord, the Lord says. What? My heritage is unto me like what? Speckled birds, right? You see? So we've been spread among all this nation, but the Lord knows who the elects are. The Lord is going to gather his elect. Fully jabbed are developing. You know what? I'm not even going to touch that. You know, you see, family, that is just, just pure nonsense. I'm not even going to bore you with that. But we thank the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Kakodash. Yeah, Bill Gates says, yeah, this thing is keeping him up. That's right. It's keeping him up because they want this thing here. They either the Third World War or pandemic. But both, they're going to get both because that's how the Lord set it up. The plagues are coming and they are not going to return unto the Lord. The Lord is bringing them upon the earth. Let's go here. Let's finish here. Let's go to the book of Second Ezra 16. And then we're going to end it. Yeah. It says here, a sword. Hear what the Lord is saying? A sword. A sword is also bioweapon. Nuclear war. All these are all civil war. They're all part of it. All part of the plague the Lord is bringing. Second Ezra 16.3. A sword is sent upon you. And who may turn it back? 
You think the Lord's word, he says he tells you, he tells you in the book of Isaiah 55, 11, my word will not return unto me void. It shall come upon the earth and accomplish whatever his heart desire. Because yeah, people are going to realize that indeed it is the Lord. This is the Lord's movie. Nobody have any power. Everybody's playing their role in this movie. <laughs> you don't know. You better fear the Lord, man. He says, a fire is sent among you and who may quench it? Listen to this. Plagues are sent unto you, including the disease that he's talking about. And plagues are sent unto you. And what is he that may drive them away? You hear that? Who? Who's going to stop them? Nobody. Eh? It said, plagues are sent unto you. And no, verse 6, it says, may any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood? The answer is no, family. Or may anyone quench the fire in the stubble? The answer again is no. When it have begun to burn, that's why you can't. It's impossible. May one turn again the arrow that is shot off a strong archer. Once those nuclear missiles leave those silos, you think anybody can call them back? You can't call them back. That is what is coming upon the earth. The mighty Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Listen to this. Sendeth the plagues. And who is he that can drive them away? The answer is nobody. Nobody can drive them away. So, beloved, I'm going to leave it there. All right? Continue to stay prayed up. We're almost out of this place. Yeah, they're talking about nuclear. They're throwing, the nuclear war is coming. They're throwing, and then you have China and uh, Russia coming together to face America. That is Ezekiel 38. Eh? The Lord, again, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh, Shai, need to be feared. That's right. This whole world is about to be laid up. And we say, Tawada, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodai, Shalom.